Hi everyone, Katie from the Montessori Room here and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to set up a bedroom for your newborn or infant. It's helpful to your newborn or infant's development if you set up the bedroom ahead of their arrival so that everything is in its place before they enter the room and begin to absorb everything around them. So why do we suggest that you have everything set up ahead of their arrival? This is because when everything is in the same place, the infant can begin to construct their understanding of the world. They begin to create a mental map. They start to notice patterns. They start to feel sensorial impressions and important information about the world that they are growing in. Now it's important to add here that you might not have a chance to set up the room uh, before baby's arrival and that's okay too. When preparing the bedroom for a newborn, here are some of the materials or furnishings that a Montessorian may recommend to you. So the first is a Sestina. This is basically a bassinet uh, for sleeping. A newborn material I was fascinated to learn about in my training is called the Tomponcino. And this right here is the Tomponcino. It's a nice soft pillow that is used um, to hold the newborn or the infant. So I will demonstrate how it works. I have uh, this baby doll here. <laughs> so you can see when I hold it, here we are like this, holding it as we would a baby. <laughs> and you can see that the Tomponcino provides support along the body. It makes um, handling, holding, and feeding more comfortable for the infant. Something that we suggest if you do decide to buy the Tomponcino is to actually sleep with it uh, before the baby arrives and this transfers your scent to it because they really like to be um, surrounded by the smell of their primary caregivers, the early months of life. The other thing that is really beneficial about the Tomponcino, especially if you have some excited family members who uh, want to hold uh, the new baby, is that it makes transferring um, the baby from the arms of one person to another easier. So you can see that we would simply pass the baby over, still providing that nice support from the Tomponcino. Other things that you will need are a change table. You want to try to set up the change table so that everything that you need for diaper changes can be found in one place. Diaper changes are a really special, a very intimate time between um, the baby and their parent or their caregiver. Um, so it's really helpful if you have everything that you need in one place so that you can really focus on the experience and bond with the baby during the process. In the room, uh, you may also want to add an adult sized chair. This can be used for feeding, for resting in your arms, for reading, for singing songs. Just a nice comfortable place for, um, for an adult to sit as well. We talk a lot about child-centered spaces, but in, uh, in infancy, in the newborn and infancy phase, it's important that um, that you, the adult, are also comfortable in those spaces. In terms of materials or toys in the newborn phase, um, really you are going to be their primary focus, so they don't need a lot of toys or anything like that. Um, also, their vision is continuing to develop, so in order to help them with that area of development, you can use high contrast images, so black and white images. We sell uh, these beautiful black and white accordion cards. You can see the high contrast images, double-sided. Uh, you can either use them by putting them on the floor uh, while your newborn is maybe lying on the floor on their topanchino, um, or uh, you could 
uh, cut them and put them into frames at the height where your child is going to be able to see them. You can really use them however you like, but in the early months of life, you really wanna focus on high contrast images. Another great newborn material that we have here at the Montessori room is the, the Munari Mobile. It's a black and white uh, mobile that is hung for the child to observe and continue to develop that visual sense. So the newborn phase is a really special time of life. It's, a, it's really a time for connection, for bonding um, with the primary caregivers. So you don't need a lot during uh, the first two months of life. They really just need you, your love, your attention, and your care. So now let's move on to the infant bedroom. All right, so now let's talk about what you will need in an infant's bedroom. So in the Montessori community, infancy is the period of two months, or at least in my experience, the period of infancy is two months to 12 months. So where the bedroom changes now between two months and 12 months is that perhaps the child is now ready um, to sleep somewhere else. Perhaps they'll still sleep in their bassinet. They can sleep wherever you are comfortable with. But in the Montessori community, you may have heard us talk about a floor bed. It's an idea that's not for everybody <laughs> because it's really important that you are comfortable um, with where your baby is sleeping. So if you are more comfortable with the idea of your baby sleeping in a crib or with you, wherever you would like, it's important that you follow your own instincts and your own intuition with where you want them to sleep. But if you're interested in the Montessori floor bed, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it now. So Dr. Montessori talks a lot about uh, freedom of movement and independence in her research. And so what a floor bed does is it brings the bed down to a level where the child is eventually going to be able to get in and out of that bed independently. Now, we talk in Montessori a lot about introducing things early so that they grow with the child. So obviously in infancy, they're not gonna be um, climbing in and out of this uh, floor bed on their own, but as they grow, they will learn and discover that they can. Now you can simply create a floor bed by putting a mattress on the floor. Something to keep in mind because safety is paramount is that a bedroom that has a floor bed has been carefully prepared so that in the case that the child does get out of their bed in the middle of the night, the room is safe for them to explore. So baby proofing, child proofing, all of those things are really important if you are using a floor bed. Using a floor bed can also help to make the eventual transition to a toddler sized bed easier. And the great thing about the floor bed is that you, you, you can use the same mattress as they grow and just add a frame to bring it off of the floor a little bit. So now that we've talked about uh, the floor bed, um, if the infant is spending a lot of time in their bedroom, uh, I recommend creating a movement area. This can be done simply by putting a small rug or soft carpet on the floor in an area of the room that is separate from where they sleep. The idea behind this is that we try to create order and connections in Montessori. By having the movement area separate from the sleeping area, the child will begin to create the pattern of bed is for sleeping, this area over here is for moving and for playing. The movement area of the room is typically where mobiles are hung or where you might find a small shelf with developmentally appropriate activities. You may wanna also include a horizontal mirror. So putting a mirror along the floor, preferably a non-breakable one, um, so that the infant can observe themselves as they are spending time in the movement area. Um, and what the mirror also does is it makes the room look bigger so the infant is able to see more of the room behind them. 
Now, if the infant is not spending long stretches of time awake in their bedroom, the movement area can also uh, be in another area of the home, perhaps the living room. At approximately six months, you may observe that the movement, the desire for movement, uh, really begins. So uh, we would recommend adding some furniture that the child will be able to pull up on. Again, they might not be able to use it right away at six months, but we're introducing it early so that when the time comes, um, they know where to find it and they will be able to use it to pull up and start to develop those gross motor muscles. The other thing that you can do is put in a pull-up bar. Uh, you can fasten that to the wall at a very low height for the child to pull up on. It's basically just like a railing. So in our next video, I'll talk about the furnishings that you can add to your child's bedroom to uh, foster independence. These will become especially uh, important in toddlerhood once your child begins to show uh, more interest and more of a need for autonomy. If you're interested in learning more on how to bring Montessori into your home, check out our at-home program. See you next time. Bye!